Upgrading your GPU can feel overwhelming. I get it. Specs, VRAM, benchmarks, there's so much to look at and it's easy to get lost. Every company claims their card is the best, but the truth is the best cards really depends on you, your monitor, your games, and your budget. I just went through this myself, so in this video, I'll walk you through exactly how I picked up my next GPU. Now, I'm not some big channel with sponsors handling my cards for free. I'm just a regular guy with a normal job trying to stretch my money and still get great performance. And that's why I think this video will help because we're all in the same boat. And everyone's starting point's different. Maybe you're building your first PC from scratch, maybe you've been gaming for years but your card is starting to show its age, or maybe, like me, you had a setup that worked fine until new games finally pushed it over the edge. Either way, by the end of this video, you'll know what to look for, what's actually worth spending on, and how to avoid getting tricked by flashy specs that don't matter. So let's start with what I had, an Intel Core i7-1400KF overclocked to 5.2 gigahertz, paired with an RTX 3070 Ti. On paper, that's not a bad setup. At 1440p on a 180 hertz monitor, it was solid for a long time, but I downloaded the Battlefield 6 beta, that's when everything changed. Even with DLSS on, I was only getting around 75 to 85 FPS. That's not unplayable, but here's the real problem. My monitor is 180 hertz, which means my real goal is to get as close to that 180 FPS as possible. Otherwise, I'm leaving performance on the table. The extra smoothness isn't just nice to have. In competitive shooters, it's a huge advantage. And the RTX 3070 Ti just wasn't cutting it anymore. The bigger issue, the 30 series cards don't support frame generation. That feature alone is basically a cheat code in modern games. Without it, hitting high frame rates in titles like Battlefield or Cyberpunk is nearly impossible unless you drop every setting to low. Yes, I know Cyberpunk isn't a competitive title, but it still has frame generation. But now let me give you a comparison. My friend Torments upgraded to an RTX 5060 paired with an Intel Core i9-14900K on the same resolution. 1440p ultra settings, he was pulling 250 frames. That's not just higher than me, that's almost triple my average. And once you've seen gameplay running at over 180 FPS, it's really hard to go back. Two things carried him there, frame generation and VRAM. His card had 16 gigabytes, while my 3070 Ti only had eight gigabytes. And in today's games, eight gigabytes just isn't enough anymore. High resolution textures eat it alive. And if you also record and edit gameplay, VRAM becomes even more important. I'd try to record Battlefield matches in OBS and suddenly the whole game would either stutter or lag because my VRAM was just maxed out. That's when I realized I needed to upgrade. So I sold my 3070 Ti, set my budget, and started looking for a new card. Like anyone, my first thought was, why not just go for the biggest card I could afford. Naturally, the RTX 3090 crossed my mind. 24 gigabytes of VRAM sounds amazing. But after some research, I realized it was overkill. Sure, it's powerful, but it doesn't support frame generation. And unless you're editing 6K footage every day, running heavy 3D workloads, that much RAM really isn't being used. It's like buying a sports car when all you really need to do is sit in traffic. That's when the RTX 5070 started to stand out. It had more raw power than the 5060, 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is plenty for both gaming and content creation and most importantly supports frame generation. It felt like the perfect balance, strong enough to push towards 180 FPS in modern games, but not so expensive that I'd have to regret the purchase. And here's the best part. I actually found a 5070 Founders Edition on eBay for $4.99. The seller had pulled it from a pre-built after upgrading to a RTX 5080. The card was practically new and I couldn't pass it up. Honestly, it was one of those rare times where the used market felt like a win instead of a gamble. Now let's break this down for you because not everyone is trying to hit 180 FPS and not everyone plays the same types of games. If you mainly play lighter competitive titles like Overwatch, Valorant, CSGO, you don't need to spend a fortune. A 5060 would be just fine. It'll hit that 180 FPS no problem even in high settings. If you're more into heavy hitters like Battlefield 6, Black Ops 7, Cyberpunk, basically any big AAA release, then you'll want at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM to stay smooth and get close to that 180 FPS. And here's the part where most people forget. Your CPU matters just as much. If your processor can't keep up with your GPU, you'll never hit its full potential. That's why Torments was getting such crazy frames. His i9 wasn't bottlenecking his 5060. So here's the bottom line. For most people, the RTX 5060 is the best bang for your buck. Around $300, frame generation, and enough VRAM to handle modern games. It's the card I'd recommend for 80% of gamers out there. The only reason I went with the 5070 is because I found that eBay deal and needed the extra horsepower 
for editing and recording on top of gaming. If I only gamed, the 5060 would be plenty. At the end of the day, it's not about buying the best card, it's about buying the right one for your setup, your budget, and the games you actually play. If you're like me and you're running a 180 hertz monitor, your goal should be to hit that 180 FPS sweet spot. Once you do, the difference is night and day. And the good news is you don't need to spend $2,000 to get there. You just need to pick the right GPU for you.